Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to Ludo History. We're playing more Golden Sun, because I want just, uh, so much chill game, and, you know, we're getting close to our summer schedule. So, the sooner we get this done, the better off we'll be. Hello, hello! Let's turn this down just a little bit more. There we go. Anyway, uh, last week we got through the infamous desert level, because desert levels are terrible. Uh, and now we've hit the... Oh. Very Islamic, or the very vaguely Middle Eastern town of Calais. I'm doing okay, I got some real bad news earlier today, but... That's okay, we're gonna have a good time. It still is fine. And I really enjoy this game, so it's a good one to calm down with. Yeah. Nah. As most of you know, like, I'm actually, uh, attempting to be a professional academic, in addition to doing stream stuff. But, uh, I just got re a rejection letter for a program I thought I was going to get into, so that kind of sucks. It's okay. Because that's just life. There's not that many jobs going around. And so that's... It's kind of what we gotta do. Ah, oh, thanks for... Thanks for hopping in, Mitsusunu, then. Yep. The eternal academic struggle. I know. You got in... Super fortunately. I, however, did not. So, we still got a couple of I've still got a couple others around, so I'm hardly out of luck yet. No? Aw. We'll have to take care of Hamish first, then, I guess. Rude. Anyway. So, last time after making it through yonder desert level, uh... We're now, uh, gonna need to go rescue Ivan's, uh, master slash mayor slash something, surrogate father. Because he went and got himself captured by thieves for uncertain reasons. He could have just hung out. He could have just hung out in vault and it would have been fine. But he chose not to do that. I got nothing. Exactly. We're, we're gonna have to go rescue him from this town of thieves, because there's a town that is entirely thieves. Apparently we're gonna have to punch a bunch of, be of bees that have spears. First. Thanks. Cool. Oh, incredible. I... swear to god. Apparently, Garrett's allergic to bees. Hey, hey, fella! Ah, uh, so... Wow, what is with this... Damn... Uh, the counter right? Oh, also, since we're heading back into Vault... Uh, we should have a new thing we can do here. It's been a while since we've been in here. Yeah. We made it. Uh, with the power of reveal, we can now do other fun shenanigans. Also, we can mind read the puppy. Ha! Good pun. Careful search will reveal a passage. Well, how very helpful of you. If only we had the ability to see secret stuff. Wonder if we get anything actually good. Well, 
strong beginning, strong. Yep. Um. We'll do that, I guess. Uh. Impact and we'll try and miss. Ooh, we're not at full HP. This might go amusingly. Oh, well, that wasn't bad. The mimic has chosen violence. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Just more of that, I think. Hmm. I will use another one of these in order to get our summons off. There we go. Let's see. So, unfortunately, like, theoretically, this playthrough is trying to also focus on the mythological origins of a lot of the random crap that we've kind of got showing up around here. Uh, that's not happened super recently, because we haven't had a whole lot. Uh, the closest thing we had was the Massacre last stream. Otherwise, we're mostly looking at things like Palette Swaps, uh, Manticore, or the Antlion Larvae. Some of that sort of stuff. We've already talked about all the summons, I think, that we have available right now. We should be get Judgment this stream, though. I think we get judgment this stream, which is helpful. Anyway, I also want to remind everyone uh, that e you can use channel points uh, in order to change what my gin setup is, because that affects my character's class. So if you use the option change my equipment, uh, you can have me swap around the gin however you want for whatever weird meme classes you want, because every two gin you swap will change someone's class. And you can come up with some real wonky stuff. It'll be a good time. And they'll come fr from somewhere, uh, sort of. Right, there are, there's clearly defined... Uh, intention going on, but uh... That'll be pretty confusing. We got a Vambrace. Most egregious setup. Oh, that's probably... That's probably going to be bad. Uh, let's try... Let's just try... I don't know if this actually will change things, but... Uh... That makes them both ruffians. Okay, so it only needs to be... I can only do... One of each. There's no, like, super... It doesn't look like there's a super hybrid, where if we give him one of every type... Yeah, it just makes him into a crappier swordsman. Amusing. Well, that's, that's pretty bad. Let's see what that did to my synergy. Uh, cure Poison, Douse, Move, and Retreat. Force, Frost, and Move. Wow, that, that made them real bad. I appreciate it. We'll see how bad we'll see how bad it probably gets, uh Cause you don't even have yeah, you have cure instead of ply now. So this is this is a mess. The whole setup just thank you, Yarum. Cause it just it just turned it into a hot mess of classes. Cause we have a swordsman, a page, a pilgrim, and a her- uh, sorry, currently a seer. If I remove the granite, then they be becomes the significantly better hermit. So currently I'm having my fire mage um, cast frost because he's the only one who can. <laughs> Oops. Uh, Mia is still- Mia's still a healer. Mia- Mia has cure. Just doesn't have ply anymore.
Also, sorry for the flashing pillars. Uh, that's just something the game decided was strictly necessary for no real reason. Actually, let's go up here. I don't think there are any encounters in this because we're inside a town technically. Oh, never mind. I was wrong. Death Cap, Death Cap, Ravager. Well, this is probably bad. This is definitely bad. Synergy. Cutting Edge. Thorn. Briar. Cure Poison. Restore. Douse. Wow. This is not a good setup. Astral Blast. Volcano. Ward. Weaken. Delude. Sleep. And Frost. You're asleep. Oh, you might fall asleep again if I'm not careful. Yep, you woke up, you fell asleep again. Oh boy. Hey, everyone's asleep now. Uh. Okay. No? Not super sure what. Oh, nice, well done. Oh, everyone's up technically, so, um... Fighting Edge. Astral Blast. Froth? Froth Sphere. Growth, Mad Growth, Cure. Wow. This sure is a setup. Uh... Don't think I've ever had quite this egregious of a setup before. And I will just pummel him. There we go. And we got a level up off of it. Huzzah. So I think it's safe to say this is probably not long term sustainable, but um... Oh, interesting. It certainly is a unique experience. Oh, uh, you need the Mirama Miramasa. Yep. Yep. I feel that problem. I remember those Terraria grinds back when I played. Ooh, a gargoyle and a cave troll. Alright, we actually have things to talk about now. So, cave troll is clearly just an upgrade of our ordinary troll. As I, uh... Uh, as I talked about a couple streams ago, with the uh, when we were in the forest, the dream forest, uh, Trot is kind of a generic word for largely female-coded, but really, ju really just broadly uh, a monstrous figure from Norse folklore. It ends up becoming uh, sort of associated uh, with. Mostly female users later in the period, but originally it seems to be fairly, fairly broadly just anyone. Uh, so there are like sorcerers who are troll-like, cats that are troll-like, generally all sorts of things. The they also don't really distinguish uh, in the the early period uh, based in any meaningful way uh, on location. So trolls largely just live outside of society. Anywhere that's not the center of the home is just fair game to have a troll. It's just how it works. Uh, the idea of there being specifically cave trolls is, I think, largely Tolkien's invention. Oh, nope, that was wrong. Um, that was super wrong. Because this one doesn't actually care, and I can't... Cool, so I can push one up and that's fine. I think. Yeah. 
Oh. Lame. Okay, wait for the cycle. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Made it. And do you fall on... Ah, uh, you fall right there. Go. Well, this will be interesting. Yep. Once again, failed to make it. Um... Okay. Uh, let's push fast. Go, 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 go. Shh. Annoying puzzles. That's alright. We should be able to push straight across. And turn out okay. Right, where does that actually land? Too slow! I know what I need to do, I'm just being bad at executing. I know, isn't it so stressful for no super obvious reason? Okay, we're gonna make it. For the little price of getting a little bit wet. Okay. We did it. They gave us a whole jingle and everything, because... Apparently... Yeah, how about no? Ah, uh, no. This is not great. Ow. Seriously? Wow. That was unlucky. Okay, well that got me back to here, so that's not super useful. Hmm. Everyone's taking a lot of damage. I'm not really sure why. Oh well. Let's see what's in here. Let me run. Me. Ow. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. There we go. Anyway, uh, sorry, the other mythological being we saw there, because we saw the cave troll, uh, which I think largely develops mostly out of... I mean, I'm a little hard-pressed to say for sure, but um, my feeling is that it's largely out of Tolkien and that tradition that is specifying that there is a meaningful distinction between something like a Begrisi, a mountain uh, giant, a Hrimthurs, a uh, frost frost giant, etc. Right? The idea that there's actually a super meaningful distinction between those is actually fairly modern. So, uh, wait, who has the catch? You don't have the catch. Nope. Fine. We will do it the, the other way. Punch. No? Hmm. Hmm. Also no. Well, I guess we can see if I'm missing something? Nope. Not missing anything. Wild. And I can't 
jump down here. So... Oh, uh, I know what I did. I'm dumb. Uh, so I need to go and ring the bell first to scare it up here, and then I can go up here to catch it. I know what I need to do. Oops. Luckily, it should be relatively quick. Hey, Tetrified! Glad you could stop by. Um, I did the thing. I do this every time, every single time I play this game. Without fail, I manage this. You'd think I would learn. But so yeah, uh, the cave troll we saw are, uh, I think, safe to say, a relatively modern invention. Uh, maybe, I don't know, there may be some argument to say pre talking Uh, that he's, you could say that he's drawing on, like, early modern stuff, where that distinction has, is starting to be made. Because you, like, you can see that in folk tales from the 17th, 18th, 19th century, way clearer than you can uh, from uh, any of the medieval material that trolls originate with. Ooh, that's actually helpful. Nope, it didn't work. Ah, uh, lame. The other one we saw though was a gargoyle, and I want to hope. Uh, I want to see it again to take a look at that mask that it had, but there's some there's some weird things going on with that. Uh, but all right, it looks like we're going out through the here. Oh yeah, that goes up. Uh, we never did figure out what siphons what the siphon seal was supposed to be. Unfortunately, I'm just I never successfully found it. Oh, I need to go all the way around up here. Okay. I will remember the layout of this town one day, but it is not this day. Anyway, the other gargoyles are actually not really a... They don't really start out as an actual monster, per se. Right, they're starting out actually as something to more or less scare away other monsters. There we go. So, hey, get out of the way. But thank you. And there we go. Uh, so they're starting out largely as like grotesqueries put on uh, cathedrals and other buildings uh, in the Middle Ages to scare off unwanted, uh, largely demonic visitors. It's not that these are the visages of demons themselves, it's that these are things that are designed to scare away unwanted guests. Hey, speak of the devil. Uh, obviously from there they relatively rapidly, I think, as soon as the 18th century, I think, I'm aware of stories that are talking about them, uh, sort of actually taking life and, uh, causing mischief. And there's certainly an incredibly strong part of the modern ethos uh, and the modern sort of mentality around what gargoyles are. And you're seeing that largely here, where, you know, they have wings, they're flying. They're keeping the largely pointed faces that you actually expect. Uh. But then these masks, they look like they're... I mean, they look to me like they're actually, like, yokai masks. Right, those don't look like those are European at all. I'd say that those are probably Japanese. Yeah, sort of this ogreish yokai, I think, might be the strong... the most obvious point of reference that I'm seeing for those. Which is super cool, to be honest, right? I don't know what to make of it, per se, but... It's very cool that that is, uh... The sort of combining of styles. Because it's clearly, you know, a Western name thing. Uh... The Abra... your, like, Alakazam? 
Dragon Wolf, is that the one you're thinking of? Or are you thinking more like the drowsy? There's a lot of yellow ones. Luckily, Gen 1 Pokemon is the only generation that I'm super familiar with. Uh, oops. I haven't played Pokemon in so long, guys. Oh, Hypno. Yeah. Okay. I actually don't need this one. Oh good, Undead, Undead, Ghost Match. Well, this should be easy, then. It does. Wait, really? That didn't kill them? Oh, these are the stronger versions. Oh, no. I goofed. I super goofed. Uh, ow. Good lord. These guys hurt so much. Exudes the smell of decay. Thank you. Right? Uh I think we finally beat it. Yeah. I I totally see that. I'm not super sure why this one has the neck block, to be honest. Uh apart from it looks cool, and it does look co legitimately quite cool. Like I am quite happy with how the that design looks. Wow, um, you guys are not healing a whole lot right now, are you? Okay. Uh, I think I actually need to... I don't remember what way I'm going. Is it here? This puts out... Oh, I need to hit the button anyway, so that's fine. That worked out. Also, I don't know where all this water goes, because we drain it, which is fine. But then it's not in the next room. Uh, ow. Ooh, that turned out nicely for us. Okay. You had to say, Nirum, uh, you gave me a kind of terrible... Oh. Well, that's where the water went. Good catch. Okay. Well... Looks like we're going this way. In order to get around. And there's our gargoyle cage full combo again. Nice. Let's just maul this guy quick. Oh, well that didn't go well. That was not a lot of... <laughs> okay, so... One thing that's clear is that I'm starting to fall off on damage real hard. Because, uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting mauled. They're dealing significantly more damage than I am. Forty-five, forty-one. Right, a big hit here is eighty. Yeah, these guys are right. They're starting to actually match me on damage, which is not a good sign. No, not really a good sign. Oh no, Nirum. Was there at least a, uh, good? A good TV show from the 90s, or was it just like a, a random TV show from the 90s? Oh well. Now. Here's the fun. Firstly. Wait, who does- oh, right, because I'm one short. Uh... With having four plus, uh, Venus Genie. Uh-huh, cool. 
I know, right? I also think of Gargoyles because of uh, the TV show, which is awesome, by the way. An absolute banger. Oh yeah, right, uh, Tetra, you are correct. We would absolutely be in way better shape if we actually shuffled our gin around in order to actually synergize together at all. But, uh... Um, Jesus. Okay. The thing is, chat, you guys... You guys get to decide what my gin setup is, and the most recent donation of channel points was to say the most egregious we could get. I'm hard pressed to get more egregious than one of everything on everyone. Literally no synergies. No reason for anyone to ever do it. Uh, as often as you donate for it, KJ. So yeah, uh, this is this is not a good idea on my part. Luckily, this game is fairly easy, and I can always just abuse summons. I can always just uh, start off with no gin, triple tier four summons, wipe the field, reset all the gin. So we'll be fine. But time to go rescue. Um. Hey, I've got I've got myself set up to do the uh and thank you for giving me all the positive affirmation. Stack all the same. Alright, Velif, uh do you want me to stack them on their appropriate ones so that we have like uh are four, four Venus Jin here, well, three Mars Jin here, three, four Jupiter Jin here, four Mercury Jin here, or do you want me to stack them all to be in different classes? Okay, so default, default setup we go. Uh, Yep. Right, it's 2-2-2 two, two, two that then causes different ones, right? Okay, you... Yeah, you're gonna want... Actually, we might keep the... We might keep him as a brute. Though, actually, we'll set, uh, don't set, and then unset. There we go. That still leaves us set up for first round, first turn judgment. Because first turn judgment is amusing. Wow, apparently I don't stand out. Rude. This music is so cheerful. I greatly enjoy this. We're not- Isaac, I wanted to read the gravestone, not frickin' rob them. Good lord. Nope. I mean, he totally did, but that has nothing to do with it. Once the village is reopened. Okay. Exactly. Uh, let's see... There's other things that- oh yeah, I wanted to actually check these guys' equipment because the Van Brace is super good. Uh, it's a better shield than, like, basically anything else we've got right now. It works on anyone, and it boosts attack, so... I mean, arguably it probably works best on Garrett, because... Uh, Garrett's the one actually physically attacking the most. And his weapon kind of sucks right now. Uh, 
Uh huh. Lenpa was traveling in the flood while tra someone named Bobby. A good question. What kind of name? <laughs> uh huh. Well, this is not going great for anyone, it sounds like. Should probably open the town up, shouldn't we? Okay, I, I hear you, but I wanna just, I wanna heal everyone. Perfect. One synergy stone later. Now we're actually ready for the dungeon. What a strange occurrence. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sounds like no one likes him. Why is he in charge, then? I, I'm always struck by that question. An XYZ thing led by a terrible person that no everyone is vocally allowed to say how much they dislike. Right, usually you try and stop that. Hmm. Now here's a question. Why is there a path down? I mean, you can see there's a catch orb there, but... Why is there a path to get down from up here? With no obviously visible way to get... Thank you, frogs. Uh, we have to open the village first. So we, ha we have to deal with uh, Dodonpa's... Dodonpa's everything uh, in order to actually get in and say hello. Aww. Fine. Looks like there's a path in from the side there, perhaps? The path in from somewhere. Hmm. No luck there. And none of these are inside into the wall, otherwise I'd be, I'd be suspicious of them. Suppose we can check from the end. Yes. Going to cross the cool path and walk for a while underground. Uh huh. Why do you have a portrait? Thank God. Portraits always mean important people. I'm not sure why she has a portrait. Hmm. GBA resource allocation is uh, very good for her plots. <laughs> but yeah, right now we have to actually like open up the village first, which means beating the Donpa's fortress, which means Garrett's just gonna kind of suck for a bit. Hmm. Anyway, I suppose I can just check. Nope. Oh, yeah, actually, that, that worked. Let's try this again. Um, thank you. Extremely cool of you. There we go. This should work better now that I don't accidentally, um... And we'll go around up here to this also extremely suspicious place. No? Yeah, there's a switch there. Perfect. Here we go. Oh, perfect. Well, not quite what I wanted, but, uh, we'll certainly take it. I don't know any re 
time when I'll uh, not take a lot of random money. A lucky medal, and a smoke bomb. Wow. So that was simultaneously super helpful and totally useless. I'm proud of it. Still just frogs inside the well. Okay. I don't think there's anything else in the cave here. Alright, those are just random puddles of water, so those aren't helpful. Hmm. I mean, some sort of underground passage. There aren't that many options available. Exactly, the lucky medal has a chance to be great. It's got a small chance, but it's got a chance. Yeah, good call. Reveal near the well is probably a good play. Nope, that's whirlwind. We're gonna blow all the frogs away. Well, that's not anything. Yeah, I... I super vague memories of something. Uh, ew. There's a suspicious... There might be a suspicious spot right there, but we'll just start off with some reveals just... Yeah, because there's nothing around here that would actually be a reveal. Uh... Yep. Uh... The thing is, there must be a path that's accessible to, uh, you know, people that aren't magic. Because right now, this path seems exclusively accessible to people who are magic. And that's not right. There aren't people who do magic around here. Somewhere underground. There's a sparkly here. Well, what a useless hole. Who hides sleep bombs in graves? Like, who does that? The, the sad, sadly, bombing walls is not. Not exactly a viable play in this game. Hmm. Hello? No. No. Okay. So none of these are working. Uh... Which means it's a great time to, uh, just have a quick... Hmm. We're just gonna try stuff for a moment longer while I pretend to look up what we need to do. This is not the first time I've gotten confused doing exactly this. I need cloak. I need cloak. That's the problem. I literally can't do this yet. So, we're actually gonna have to go fight the Kraken first, and then go through the Tolby arc, and then deal with Lenpa right before going to, Mar to Venus Lighthouse. So... That explains our problem. We need sneaky sneaks. Yep. We don't have a way to disguise ourselves yet. 
So that's fine. Uh, I have not gone back to Vale yet, actually. But before we do, uh, we're gonna treat this... We'll head back there, see what we've got, because I think there are a couple of things out there. That are available yet. Uh, anyway, we're just gonna ruin this Vermin's Day. Because this one is a lot. Knight with horns and lion head, gun, face, wings, and stuff. I'm telling you. Absolutely ruining this thing's day. I mean it did, but I wanted to show it off. Praise. Uh, my best bet for what the heck is going on with Judgment is that what we're looking at is... Uh, that was dumb of me. That was extremely dumb of me. I, there isn't auto-attack in this, or auto-targeting in this game. Anyway, uh... Hi, Vale. We came home for a little while. It's a visit. Th thanks? Thanks, guys. Uh, let's see. There's a handful of stuff to do here. Not least of which are all of these whirlwinds. So yeah, uh, my best bet is that this is kind of a hybrid of several things from the Book of Revelation. Power bread. Uh, so... Largely, I mean, the... The ain't... Not the button I wanted, thank you, Ivan. Uh... Largely, we're looking at very explicitly Christian imagery, which is not surprising with a name like uh, Judgment, that we're actually looking at straight-up apocalyptic stuff. But it still is interesting, because this game has been largely mm, reticent of that idea, right, where it's not super sure that it actually wants to do that. In a way that something like, you know, Final Fantasy has always been willing to just go there and use Christian imagery freely as just random visible iconography. Sometimes even with commentary. What's interesting to me though is that it is an Earth summon, right? And that it's coming fairly explicitly out of a different tradition than all the Mars summons. Yeah, exactly. It's absolutely a case of that, Rachel. It's just Christian imagery, but not actually doing anything with it, because it, I mean, it is just another mythology to... Aw. It's another mythology to draw on. Just like we have plenty of... No, no we haven't. Oh, no. Oh no, we need to check on mom. Right? Because certainly they have some vague reference. Right? The Greek stuff that they've seen, shown, uh, proves that they at least have some vague reference to what is going on. Uh, some, some present understanding of the stories that these myths are coming from. But not really, we haven't even fixed the mom. Mom, the roof is still leaking. Hey. No. Turn over. Mom? Mom? No. No, we haven't. We just... We were in the area. We're bad... We're bad at talking. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Y 
yeah, yes. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> this is not... Nope. Nope, don't. Seriously? S S Mom. Mom. Okay, but like... Aww. You're not fine, yes. Good lord. We got schooled. We got absolutely roasted. Do not use it for evil. Uh, We're not the ones you need to tell that to. Oh yeah, well, this was like in the very first episode, uh, right, another case of them actually just yoinking uh, Abrahamic stuff. The mountain is Mount Aleph, as in the letter A in the Hebrew alphabet, which then is associated with a whole bunch of layers of just, like, future. Yeah, it has. For the time being. Nope. <laughs> yep. Yep, we will. Aww. Uh-huh. Sure you were. Yeah, alright. Not, not quite. Not even close, actually. Not at all close. Ivan. Yep. No, actually, we're actually, we're legitimately doing fine. Uh, but yeah, also the cre divine like creator entity is a like floaty, floaty spooky rock. That is, uh, spoilers, actually a created entity. So, uh, I think another case of layering sort of Hebrew, very vaguely Hebrew. Uh Well that's cause it is. That's that's true. Aw. Aw. You don't want to come with us. There's a lot of like, and it's actually fairly traumatic if you think about it for any length of time. Uh, that was another aftershock. That's unfortunate. Also, a very real part of volcanic eruptions, as it turns out, because uh, if you, I mean, certainly for all of my friends in Iceland, they were all complaining about before the uh, Gelding dollar eruption started. We were looking at literally. Well, we can find out. Uh, left, right? Literally thousands of earthquakes in, in the magma chamber. And so, right, no one was able to get any sleep in, the, like, the entire Reykjavik area. Because there was just so much... There were actually so many volcanic eruptions. Mm. I bet you if I do this... Ta-da! So, good on them for actually, like, knowing what that looks like. Uh... I mean, you can certainly propose that. I'm not sure it's a good idea, but sure. The slowest sink. One... And... Two... Should be able to let me go... Hop, hop. Super log roll, and away we go. Okay, now we're back on level. Let's see how much stronger we are now. But we actually have, you know, teams that synergize. Yeah, that's way better. Massively better. Uh, 
Oh no, we're gonna get spooked by the ghost who does magic. Oh crap, that's actually bad. Uh, the evil spirit actually is annoying to clear. Um, what do I have to deal with that? The elixir doesn't... yeah, del delusion's done in sleep. Gar, I'm actually gonna have to... Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to actually, like, stop by the priest on the way out. That doesn't usually happen. It's rare as the day I actually have to, like, stop by the priest in order to make things work. Anyway, right, I'm trying to remember how many there were. It was something like 20,000 earthquakes or something insane. I mean, most of them were pretty small, but... Not getting any sleep is totally a fair reaction in that situation. This looks fun. We roll this here. That ends up there, and I can jump through this. There's also this way. Oh, that just puts me out in main again. Okay. Oh, interesting. I scuffed it real bad. Uh, because I can't actually roll that one. Interesting. I'm gonna have to go all the way around again now. Amazing. You'll love to see it. Though... Doesn't that just... Where does that actually put me? Because if I can do that by walking in here... No, this this goes somewhere else. Okay. Hey, there's a Jupiter Dune up there. Well. That means I'm actually... I know, right? Gravity appears to be more of a suggestion to these things. Oh well, that was on me. I should have known. Should totally have known. Uh, the thing I don't know. Right, it's a GBA game. It should. I should have known it would take every possible chance to just mess with your. There is, however, one up here. Oh, good. Truly, the most important thing to ever put into a chest. Yep. Curses are the worst. Oh well. Here we go. Back around the circle. Unfortunately, still not really having a lot of mm, new things to talk about on the analysis side. Because... Well, I'm sorry. A giant pissed off bear is not exactly peak mythological material. And I don't know the specific references in Judgment. Uh, right, there's some weird, there's some weirdness that goes on in the specific, the very specific references that are a part of it. Um, so right, the lines, uh, ooh, actually. Actually scratch that, I do know. It's an amalgamation of the Apostles. I think. Maybe. Ooh, no, but it doesn't have the eagle. It's missing one. Right, the idea... Oh, don't you dare. But, uh, Mark is an angel, so that doesn't... Uh... Right, let's see, what are our apostle symbols? We've got eagle, lion, bull, and angel, right? So... I wanna take a look at that though, that's, that's an intriguing possibility. Oh, we got one more Jupiter Jin bumming around. I should set you to be here. There we go. 
Is, wait, is this the super busted one? Oh! Oh, it's attacked twice. Oh, that is, that is pretty busted. It's not the one I was thinking of where it's like 90% damage reduction or something insane. But, uh, going twice is pretty good. I wonder if Kraden's house has anything. I think that's the last thing we have to do in here. But also, I think we're low on Mars, Jimmy. understand elemental powers. Thank you. Yeah, I guess you could read it as just man instead of angel. Uh. I guess. I don't... I usually see it as angel more often than uh, being just man for... was that Mark? I think it's Mark that's the, the angel. I don't remember 100%. So I guess we will, we'll want to pull up Judgment again soon and see if we could identify them. But that's my initial. That's my current thought: is that we're actually looking at an amalgamation of the apostles into a single doom stack. Oh, I need to go up here to heal, uh, to remove curse from. Who's his face? From Ivan. Thank you. Uh, repel evil. Yes. Ooh. Ooh, that, that track... That track was short. But oh, kinda awesome. I want that to be a full track, not just like a little jingle. Yeah, yeah, what a shock. Uh, right, exactly, Tetra, right? Because that doesn't change the, no the raw number of turns. But, if you know what something's weak to, or if you have, a, like, two strong summons lined up, you can just, like, roll in with two uber summons. Uh-huh. Okay. As just the face of a man, instead of being, uh, any particular specific one. Okay. Cool. Ha! <laughs> Oof. Evangelion's... Theology, mythology stuff. Uh, it's... I'm not super familiar with the show, but I remember it being a time. Japan does weird things with mythology. And I... This game's actually being fairly... Fairly thoughtful with it. I think broadly. Uh, where at least our stories are... Even though there's some interesting choices, uh, Lost Ages Ulysses is my favorite interesting choice. Also, I want to look up the Jin here, because I'm missing a Mar- I'm one down on Mars Jinny compared to everything else. And that really isn't worrying me, because... Uh... Let's see... Oh, it's in the freaking tunnel. Yeah, yeah, uh, Rachel, if you do, I want to see the highlight reel. Because... Right, uh... Watcher found, knows that they have a couple of the sources that made their way into Japan in the mid-20th century, but... Lord knows we don't know all of them. And there are some weird ones. There's got to be some really wild choices. Because I know there's... Exactly. There's one in here? 
Anyway, like one of my ideas here eventually is... Yeah, okay. So the margin I'm missing is in here, but I don't know what it takes for me to actually get... If I talk to her, can I get permission to enter the tunnel or do I need to rescue him at first? Because if I need to... If I need to rescue Hammett first, that's going to be annoying. Ooh. We love to see the contacts. Uh, please. Let me pester you into letting... Hello. He's not hurt, but at least he's fine. Aww. Please? No. No. Uh, I do have Corona, yes. The one I'm missing is Scorch. Uh, but I don't remember how to actually get into Calais Tunnel. Oh, duh, I need to get, actually go in through the town entrances. Uh, okay, yep. There are entrances around here. Somewhere. It's a very well maintained ball, thank you. The northeastern part of the town. Ah, there it is. Um, how do I get. Right there. Got it. Yes, guys, I did not- I did not get that particular Corona. Very fortunately. Problem solving. Awesome, so this means Garrett now gets to class up and I- Isaac can actually get his thing. Uh... We'll just trade these. And then you can set that, and we're good to go. They actually do a really, really cool job with making sure that the names all line up, right? That our elements and our gin names all kind of match. Which is like good, just good work on the localization team. I don't have a lot clever to say on that, it's just. Well done, localization team, you did good. Anyway, uh... As soon as we finish this, which I think we only have, like, one... Hmm. Aw, darn. I can't just... Disappear. Ah, and then there's the entrance there. And then around here should be there should be one more entrance. Well, somewhere up that way. Uh, we can unlock those once we get in. Um, places. I think after we actually rescue uh Hammett, we unlock those. Oh, look at that statue randomly resetting. Uh, helpful. Anyway. It's true. But for most of our audience, I think we are basically at the end. Anyway, uh, in my title, we promised terrible boat rides. So I think it's time for a terrible boat ride. <laughs> now, here's the question, chat. Do we intentionally throw... No. In the Caragol. Technically, this is not a real ocean. Aww. It is big, though. Well, we will. Don't worry, we will soon. 
Highlight goes. Yes. What? Yeah. I know. Why would I be bothered by that? Ooh, look at- hang on. Isn't this a map of the transatlantic triangle trait? It totally- hang- I see Florida on this map, and it worries me. Right, this is just- this is just a historical diagram. This is a historical diagram, but mirrored. So, yeah, th this is just... This is just a uh, map of the trans transatlantic triangle trade, which is uh, primarily, uh, you know, enslaved people and then Finnish goods going up to Europe. Which is not awesome. Yeah, yeah, uh, I wasn't expecting that. I, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, but yes, main focus is on enslaved people. Yes, I'm obviously gonna take it. Well, we have like 12,000 gold. Do you, you want to take it? You, do, do, you, do, do you want to take it? We could buy you one. We're nice people like this. Wow, what the heck happened? Oh. Well, that happened. Well, sadly, we will have to wait to get that Venus gin. It shall tempt us for a while. Lots of passengers, eh? Oh, we can get on the boat, we just can't take the overland route. Any other reliable warriors around? Hey, well, would you look at us? Uh, real, real smoothly, you dude. Everyone is real smooth. But look how good this like Cedar 3D is. I know, guys. It's almost like they're begging us to go participate in the plot. Fine. Yep. Okay. Boat tickets. Thanks. Until the tourists arrive. Uh, okay. Well. Sir, you're you're being suspicious. Huh. So there's a missing replacement ship. What's wrong with this ship? Do you... Does anyone ask what's wrong with this ship? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. So... Rowing is a man's job. You know, you hard work like this when you're young. Supposedly, there's an island in the middle of the caracal. Hey, masks are hard, okay? We've got one home. Technically, two masks. Well, uh. Can we. Can we go? I'm gonna shove you out of the way. Nope. Darn. I thought for sure that that... Uh, I, I thought that that anchor up there might be an anchor that I could yoink. 
because we are nothing if not kleptomaniacs, but no such luck. I mean, it doesn't have enough rowers, but it's actually not a terrible kind of ship for it. Right? It's... That was totally what I wanted to do. There we go. Ooh, that's actually helpful. That's a lot of HP. Anyway, uh, I suppose we'll just start talking to people randomly until we manage to actually, like, arrive. I need your ticket at the ship's plank. Uh, okay. Until the tour group gets here. So what do I need to do to make the tour group get here? I swear. Ah. Toby ship. Hmm. Okay, so that's not. Nothing. Fine. Uh, I don't know. There's supposedly a hidden item in the barrel here. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, the rug here is beautiful, but uh, also extremely weird. Right? I mean, the cross in the center is not exactly mm, subtle imagery, but it's purely aesthetic. Uh, where, at least in like Xi'an, with the uh, Buddhist symbols on the cross, uh, they can at least make an argument that it makes sense. I don't see it on that one. I don't see it on that one at all. Hey, we are... Okay, can we... can we deal with that? Who do I need to still talk to? What else can I do? Hello? Why is there... Why is that? Oh, talk to the backpack. So I need to talk to the guy in Calais Inn. There we go. Okay, nope. Uh, the Silk Road will automatically clear once we hit a certain point of the story. We just... There is one person we have to go talk to, and it gives you no hints that this is a person other than that there is a... If you go around here, then eventually, like... You have to go talk to everyone, and they're all talking about Colosso.
there. Now that I've talked to that guy, it will activate the thing. That's all it took. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If you say so. If you say so. Now, interesting names, uh, Urnos and Sean. Lalavero. Let me fly from Gondolin. Huh. Wow. Um, by the way, right, well, the whole time Calais is, uh, coded Middle Eastern, vaguely, these guys are coded significantly more. Uh-huh. Which tells us something about, you know, um, our coding going on in our world design, in that we have not Eurasia, and we have not Africa, And Gondwin, i.e. Gondwana land. Y'all are paranoid. Y'all are hearing first Corona, now this. But right, right, we've got like, I guess vaguely Turkish perhaps for this town. But uh, then coded very Arabian. And Gondwin, now that we've mentioned it, uh, is actually the name of a legitimate uh, supercontinent. So we have uh, Gondwana Land and, what is it, Laurel Asia? As the two supercontinents when Pangaea broke apart some 60 million years ago. They assign names to those. One of them becomes the name for not Africa in this video game. It's absolutely wild. We'll get to see more of it and the, um, not great decisions that they made about Gondwin, uh, in The Lost Age, because there are some real doozies. Uh, but that's something for the next game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on, guys. <sighs> Just keep counting. Keep counting them. They'll, they'll, maybe they'll eventually show up. Oh my god. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Nope, no one's gonna miss the boat. Okay, okay. <laughs> One extremely late person. Uh, come on. Now that they all leave, guess who's gonna show up? Ta da! Yeah, yeah, they would have. Well, isn't this thrilling? Now that we finally did that, we can actually get on this dumb boat. The Chat, take your votes. How much of a disaster do you think this boat is going to be? Right, it is absolute catastrophe of a boat ride. How do you think it's going to go? Of course.
It's just that. Uh huh. The oarsmen can't fight. We'll never. What do you mean we'll never make it? I mean, the little the little anchor turn that we tried to yoink earlier. Yeah. No, no, don't question it. Don't don't question the stupid anchor charm. You just you just don't want to do it. No. Okay, cargo hold has nothing of value in it. Oh, that's not true. It has a lucky medal. <laughs> Rachel, that that is my the, There's a reason I never use the, that ship. Did you do anything? Uh-huh. What was that about? Gee, I wonder where it is. What could have happened? We're going to walk menacingly at someone. Setting sail very shortly. Uh, no, literally, literally everyone is going. Mm-hmm. No one would ever look... Right there? No one would ever... Just like that! Why not a replacement or us? Jesus. Okay. Well... Oh, perfect. Uh, you are going to visit Colossal? Even though I'm opposed to violence, I'm looking forward to Colossal. Neat. Uh-huh. They did sell the tickets for an awful lot of money. Glenn is real soon. Like... Well... Yep. Four tour guides. Really? He's also... Well, we can arrange that, too. Yep, we're going. Uh... Force him. Yeah. Yep. No, Ornos is a sky god. Ordinos is the is the sky alongside Gaia being the Earth, but uh, Jupiter is what Zeus's grandfather, and the other one is named Sean, just because. So, right, a lot of times there's some vague context for what's going on with the mythological references. There's none for this that I can think of. Yo. Well, that was mean of you. Oh, I should talk to Kaja first. Leave as soon as you get your orders. Aren't you around here? No. Okay. So. Uh, what do you think it's time we're just, like, gonna leave? Yes! We have to launch the ship. Preparations are being made right now. 
Ta-da! What? Yeah, I did. There are monsters. It's better than the land route. Oh yeah, once again the volcanic eruption, uh... <laughs> The volcanic eruption did stuff. Oops. That is dangerous. After all, yep. We can they can deal with monsters. I mean no they can't, but we can. Really? Yeah. Why not? If they're from Angara, they will. Okay. Lucky Ink. <sighs> hey. <laughs> exactly. Super Station. Let's go. And again, this is another one of these dungeons, right? While this cutscene takes way too bloody long, Golden Sun problems, uh... The, uh... The idea that there are talismans or superstitions that just must be observed, that are legitimate and valid, and that we, that we the players, participate in upholding, even when other people are saying that it's silly, it's something I genuinely like. Because it doesn't it doesn't super matter about whether these people believe it works or not, or whether other people believe it works or not. There are people to whom it is important, and the game actually is respecting that and almost portrays these people... I don't know, it leaves it ambiguous, right? It leaves it ambiguous as to whether or not it actually has power. Okay, but like, is it, is it this one? Yep, sure did. Let's go. Uh huh. Uh, us. It's us. We we got. We got voluntold. So that that tells us how scuffed we're already being. That we just got voluntold into this. Yes, we're gonna help the pass have the passengers row the ship. <sighs> yeah, why not? I know. Obligatory JRPG Kraken, who could have seen this coming? Now, the trick is, this gets so scuffed that you can actually hit find the go for it. You can actually run into the place with the super boss of this game. The shadows of monsters and the want yes, obviously. Yeah. You sure on that? Yeah. 
Ага. Yeah, about that. You don't have a choice no matter. I mean, there are four of us. Yeah, about that. So remember the, uh... Uh-huh. No. <laughs> so that was um extremely scuffed. Uh but the gimmick here is we actually have to make sure that we balance out By the way also let it be known we are bad at our jobs. Now, I don't know how you know that, but that's okay. Another passenger will roll the ship, which is hilarious. That, that's our job. Unluckily. Unluckily, this is our job. So. If we don't balance the two sides of the ship, I.e. if we... The game basically has two categories. It told us, young people and men are ideal. So if we put old people and women on one side, and strong people on the other side, we'll actually end up running aground on an island in the middle of the sea. This is an option the game lets you do. Which is utterly bonkers. And that island is where you fight the super boss of the game. Uh, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of there's a lot of pain. A lot of good loot, but mostly pain. It naturally is shaped like a skull, just in case you were wor wondering. No, oh, that's the Gunswind Passage. Monster sighted. Oh no. Uh, I want to check. Yep. Ten, yeah. So da, 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 da. Hmm. I'm gonna see where I actually get to it, uh Uh -huh. Oh, right. Right, I totally forgot about this. Oh my god, I... I forgot that that was how you actually access it. So this is the... this is the... no, no. Uh, the way you get back later is in the very last... one of the last areas of the game, there's a monster called the Tempest Lizard. Wow. So, dude got absolutely fucked up. Uh, yeah, dude's dead. Someone just straight up died right there. 
We did nothing to stop them. So we're just gonna check out to see what they're weak to. Uh, that's normal damage. Physical is just normal damage. Uh, they're strong against water, so Mia's just gonna do freaking nothing to except heal. Uh, don't you actually poison us, Garrett? I swear to god. And Garrett is the one that's gonna maul them. Okay. Fair enough. Ta-da! So yeah, the, uh, there's a monster in like the last area of the game called the Tempest Lizard. And you can get picked up by the Tempest Lizard by jumping into uh, the tornado it creates, and it will carry you uh, down to... Yeah, the dude's literally dead right there. Okay, dude, he's unconscious. Sure. Yes. Have fun! Yep. Aww. One. Guess how well this protecting this area is gonna go. No, the music is so good, but, um, yeah. So anyway, in other words, the way we get to the final super boss of the game later is by jumping into a giant bird's talons and being carried there. Also, I think I actually may have scuffed it, uh, because I do want to actually show it off, because it is more content, you know? No, left side strong, right side weak. Perfect. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're gonna we're gonna scuff we are absolutely gonna scuff our ship. Whack. This is no joke by the way. These seabirds attacking you just suck. Uh, I've been dive bombed by Arctic turns. And they super duper suck. Ah. Oh yeah, I know we can't actually get to the boss, and the boss would freaking destroy us if we got there, but I can at least show off Crossbow Nile. A little bit. Well, the monster's not going to eat you. We're gonna take care of it. Oh, joyous. That notable sea monster, the Rabid Bat. Does anyone want to know why rabid bats are, uh, you know, wow, uh, Isaac, you, you're real bad at this whole synergy thing. And big flare wall. No? Okay. Hey, are we okay? No. No, we killed another one. And yes, they will... They will say this exact cutscene again. Oh no, he's unconscious. Oh, it's totally not worth it, but we, we've got time. We don't really have anywhere to be tonight, so... Sir. Yes. We need throw for the content. Well, you're gonna have to row for us. All right, take your place. We'll need you to protect this area again. We are so bad at protecting this area. Are you kidding me? 
Preparations ready. Ship's course clear. All right, we're off for the third time. Literally. Absolute insanity. Because we have to fight this four times. And then roll into the Kraken fight. Oh, well, all the birds ran away. Uh, because the harpies are attacking. Oh, the, cal the calamari. The calamari are tired of being fished. Ah! Here we go again! Isn't this build right? <laughs> Absolutely awful. I just want to quit rowing. A Virago. Interesting. Hmm. I extremely not good. Not not a great choice of word here, uh, actually. Because this isn't actually so much of a... Uh, Uh, mythological reference, so much as it's just sort of the ordinary, uh, language reference. Because the Virago is technically the first to use some sort of, like, domineering woman. It's a fairly derogatory term. Even though it's originally from, right, it's related to the word vigor. So... Shouldn't actually be derogatory in uh, meaning. I guess starts off being complimentary as sort of like valorous or strong, but comes to be more derogatory of someone who doesn't act properly as a woman. And assigning that to the harpy palette or to the harpy sprite is kind of yikes. It's right. I mean, it's better than assigning that to be referring to, say, the, uh, using the demoness palette, or sprite, you know, our siren, succubus, etc. path. This should be left side again, so we want someone strong. You, you have a sword. Yeah, you are. Yeah, deal with it. Okay, you're gonna have to roll, thanks. Yep, take take place, cool. At least you're strong, so. We should be well on our way to being extremely far off course. And yes, literally half of the crew is going to just frickin' die because we are bad at defending them. This makes no sense, but that's okay. Uh, Beck? I don't know. I think we just phase out of existence and take a nap. Oh. It's time. Who's ready for some fresh calamari, folks? Oh, well, you got wrecked. Oh, you also got wrecked. Big Kraken time. Hmm. We'll do that first. Um. Boost our attack. 
If I can land that, that would be... Actually, let's just go all in on trying to land that. I've got a smoke bomb somewhere, don't I? Boo, I don't actually have it on you. Okay. We'll just throw all of the stops. And yeah, so this is our Kraken. It looks like a, well, giant... A giant cephalopod. Specifically, it's clearly some sort of squid. Uh, based off these two big tentacles. I mean, it's actually just a super good giant squid look. So, I'm a fan. Ow. Go to sleep. Uh, you didn't go to sleep. I mean, no, it's... At least partially a squid, right? It's... It's face is angled the wrong direction to be a, uh, actually a squid. But... Right, it, yeah, its face is angled the wrong direction, but it's got squid ten tentacles with these two long ones. It's got a squid uh, carapace on it, so I'm willing to let it run by being a squid. That being said, by virtue of being a kraken, we've actually got a uh, real interesting thing. In that this isn't what Krakens uh, started as. Right, this just isn't what... This isn't what the Kraken originally was. Hmm. Uh, our earliest mention of the Kraken comes to us from the mid-13th century, so it probably starts a little bit earlier than that. Okay, so you can't get knocked to sleep, but can you get... Huh. This is bad. Maybe you'll get shocked. At least, hey, you got shocked. That's awesome. Uh, these aren't helpful, but I can do that one at least. Hmm. Kieran. Uh, we'll actually use an item. Don't you have a full party? Yeah, you got a full party, Jen. Perfect. And there's a full heal. You're still paralyzed, which is actually huge. And then we should be in a good spot to get some more good summons off. 296. That's pretty good. Also, it's for some reason, it's just actually pretty weak to paralyze, and it's really funny. Uh, I can just do a heat wave, I think. Then we'll actually throw up kite on you and summon Nerea. Uh, Nerea's probably gonna do absolute shit, but that's fine. Anyway, so in that mention from the mid 13th century, it's a Norwegian text, Kanon uh, Skuxiao, so the king's mirror. The kraken is actually described as the largest of the whales. Uh, so big that it regularly gets mistaken for an island. But, uh, in contrast, we look at something like the... Oh, perfect. That's actually really strong. Um, Kraken no longer stunt. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm not ready to do that. Hmm. Guess we'll just do that. Um... Can double heat wave. Take advantage of the. Yeah, actually, we can Zephyr and then just heal ourselves. Perfect! Uh, so, by the uh, mid 16th century, we start seeing descriptions that look an awful lot like a squid. Uh, so in some of the descriptions for the Carta Marina, uh, from like 1550 or so, uh, Olaus Magnus, uh, describes it as something that looks a lot like a squid, but then there are descriptions from the 16th, 17th, and early 18th centuries that describe it more like a crab. And then, uh, it just keeps spiraling out of into increasingly silly things, because it starts getting described as a... 
uh, squid by the early... It's solidified as a, as a squid, I should say, by the uh, late 18th century, and so you're seeing descriptions of it from sailors uh, around 1803, where we're really seeing these as squid. And it gets stuck... It gets pretty well stuck there, which is, you know, totally fine. It isn't a bad thing by any means, it's just is a thing. Anyway, we I'm shocked that it's actually not I'm shocked that it's not closer to dead yet. Because I'll be honest, it's actually kind of owning us. In the back it hurt. Okay, uh, that should be all of these set back on. So we'll we'll do that. Uh, we'll uh, scorch it again. Storm ray, and we'll do the full party heal. God, manipulating the gin in this is actually so much fun. But once you sort of... Hey, there we go. Once we know how to do it... Uh, it's kind of great. We lost yet another oarsman. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. Uh, guys, we just kind of already beat that home. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're doing it for the content. Up, we protect the area again and we get super duper lost. It's hilarious. I believe I've done it right? Yeah, does the Rainbow Kill actually do anything besides looking cool? I don't actually know Tetra. I know it looks rad. I know it's annoying to get because I think it has to be a kill with a Jin of the elemental type that the monster is weak to. Which is just annoying to set up. But that's okay. It just... Uh, let's see, are these birds just gonna go flying off into the distance? Let's go, yup. Zoom. Land ho! Let's see what land we get. Oh! We landed at Tolby! Wild! I didn't get to throw for content! Darn. That's okay, we'll have to- we'll have to show it off someone else. There will be plenty of time to do all of Crossbow Nile at once. Oh, bonus EXP, gold, and higher drop rates. Nice. Yeah, apparently... Apparently either the lady or the old man was uh, significantly stronger than... Uh... Gee, a strange group? Group of six we ferried across. Uh huh. Well, we're behind. Yeah, I think we've already missed at least one major one. Uh, that's our fault. Sorry. Uh, I think we've we've missed the Kikoki Manji drop. Cause I remember that being 
weirdly early and also incredibly annoying. Yep. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Keep heading west to Tolby. Oh, I haven't missed it yet? Uh... I don't know if we'll actually ever manage to get it. Uh... So... But if we do, it'll be good. We'll get the important ones, right? We're gonna- we're gonna get the- what is it? Titan Blade? Cause that's a guaranteed- that's not a random drop, that's just like a guaranteed thing that- what exists. I am, if it's not obvious, I am way more familiar with Lost Age than I am with this. I've actually beaten this game once. So, Lost Age I've beaten like three times. It's, I love that game. Anyway, Tolby. For all of the, cross the point into it. If you get lucky, something good will happen. Uh-huh. We can either burn all our money, or... Ah... Uh, speaking of which, we got a lot of money back here that we need to burn. Cause... All of our artifacts are now suddenly way worse. Right, the only one here that's... The only one of our artifacts that's worth keeping is the one we're about to buy here. Cause otherwise, we're suddenly rolling into ordinary weapons for a hot second. Also, I think true for... Oh, we have no fancy things left. Okay. Pretty much true for all of these two. So we're going to spend a lot of money next time. So, uh, this wraps up the stream for today, now that we're up in Tolby with this... Lovely, lovely gem and our very mm, white, very white stone city. In fact, our, you know, fairly, our, well, all but explicitly uh, Roman inspired city. Even though we've got a dome up there. Uh, nope. Gee, I wonder, uh, I wonder if that's a problem. Gee, I wonder if that's a problem. Anyway. So Bobby appears to be missing, as we just found out. We'll find him next time. So announcements. Uh, if you enjoyed this, make sure you follow and subscribe to the channel here on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, the VODs will be uploaded there. And I do, uh, as often as I get them done, special video essays on YouTube, so the current one I'm working on is explaining medieval magic through Dark Souls. Turns out Dark Souls is better than you would expect at doing that. Even with all the weird and stupid things. Uh... But... Also make sure you're followed here, because this Saturday, we're gonna have a Wrath of the Druids 2. Spread the word, because this is a putting in a lot of work, uh, Wild and Whirling Words, Rachel, who was here earlier, uh, is one of our guests for that, alongside, uh, three other historians of the medieval Celtic world. So, we've put in a lot of work in this, so make sure you, uh, make sure you come join for that and spread the word. We had, like, 70 people on average for last time, and I want to see if we can beat that, because it sounds like the DLC is going to get a little bit crazy here at the end. There you are. Wrath of the Druids 2, Electric Boogaloo. It's going to be great. Uh, so yeah, that'll be uh, starting at 9am this Saturday, 9am Central Time, so 3pm UK time. So I hope I will see you all then, and then we're going to have a week off, summer vacation. 
uh, we'll be back with a brand new schedule. I'm hoping to get one to two more streams per week, so instead of twice a week, three or four times, and stream for longer each time all summer long. So, more details for that will be coming out on the Discord and here on the schedule page on Twitch, so keep an eye out. Otherwise, yeah, I will catch you all next time.